Let's continue on within part two of uh, this video. Video we left off with the last trade, and then around the 19 handle, and then price uh, as we continue on further happens to go up where it's 33.98. I don't. Th I think we recently sold everything and bought back, so just another aggressive sell, probably about half. And uh, that's uh, what we'll do. And. Uh, Well, yeah, what's, the, what's the price? We got uh, 33.98. So we own uh, on uh, which one are we? Should we do it in this direction, wrong side? Okay, so we are selling with it going up that of the Mona coin. We got 6,000 of them. So half would be about 3,000, so 3,100. And you'd get 105,000. And continue for 41. That's even a decent move in itself. I mean, this is like pick away at it until it stops going up, I guess. At some point, again, selling out is not okay. I mean, I already did it on one of the occasions, and I could technically do it again. But... Half worked out pretty good last time. Maybe better than half here, like 16.50. And then put the rate in 45.26. Uh, Probably get over 70 or 80,000 on that, I think. 70 to 80, yeah, 75. And when you're looking to buy back, you can be extremely greedy here when it goes up like this. It's just the way the nature of this game, nature of the beast. Oh, 58. Close. 52. Worse. 37. I mean, not even maybe. It's got to go way lower than that. 30 has even got to go lower than 36. Sell maybe 675. Buy back in somewhere in the 20s. And you only do a small back in the 20s because it can go way lower than that. And I know it does, but. When you're up like this, it's just the nature of the beast. Okay, what was that move? What was that price? Yeah, I mean, might as well take a small tab at 23. 23.16. But you know and go lower. But just to get back, a, a trade back, just to acquire the ownership you're really low on. As the game's playing out, you've gained 306,000 of the GRS, starting with like 12,000. That, I don't, that's about 25 times higher and about 35% more mono because you had 1,000 up to 1,354. But that's going to really change big here as that GRS number will go way lower, the mono will go way higher with the trade. How many do you want to uh, get back now or sell on the GRS side? You accumulated 74,000 last time. Therefore, 50,000 is most certainly a small trade, and that's going to really help out. I'd even maybe consider more, but at 50,000, you'd be gaining 2,100, so that helps does more than double your Mona inventory. So we'll do something like that. Because I hate really buy. I think it's still too high to buy. I think when you see moves that go up too fast like that. But in turn, if this happens to be a bottom, and I mean, it looks like it could easily go to like 16, 15, and I know it does and all that stuff. But if it doesn't and you start to build it back up, this buy you just did is going to do wonders and be able to sell back again. But I wouldn't want to sell until probably like somewhere here and like, I know this is a good mathematical number and realistically I would be making trades at these levels, but for video purposes, I'm also looking for aggressive plays. But moves to like 40, a breakout above, to like 46, 48, because yeah, this thing is starting to break out. And I don't know if it does or not. It looks like it's not going to now. 15, want a better price. Small speculation play again. That's buy 13, 18. But I don't want to go too, too big yet. And because of the big accumulation in here, the 105 and the 74, I technically have managed 100. I still have 130,000 of these that I've accumulated. I mean, there's no way I'm selling anywhere near that number. Uh, in fact, I might even just match that 50,000 number again. 
and that gives me 3,700 on the other side. That's uh, now I can go out. And I can sell, easily sell two, three thousand if it goes up the other way. So now let's see which way it does go. Because where would I sell? Probably back in this level where it was before, somewhere near around breaking 20, and buying back more. Well, I see where it came from here. So maybe at around not eight and a half, nine. So I'll look for nine or 22-ish type area. Well, there's 678. That's even better than 9. And by short selling, as I call it, selling light here, now we give yourself a plethora of options because you're definitely selling more than you did before. You're definitely not selling all. I think you could go up to half. I'm going to go about 90,000, and that's going to give me a very good gain of 13,200 on the other end. From this point, Selling, I mean, this is now a big capitulation move. You got to figure conservatively, even a, a pretty weak move will get to close to 12 in the, in the 11s. And buying back in here, maybe you could buy like four, go to five ish. Well, maybe not five, even still five, yes, but we'll just see where it goes next from here. Four fifty? No, what lower than that? Four oh eight? Yeah, we'll take that one. So with the uh, ownership here of uh, one hundred and twenty-nine thousand, which is what I left myself, half is like sixty-five thousand, which is not that much lower overall, or still a good percentage lower rather, of the ninety, which would give me a good return. I should easily get around the same as or more, more or more as I was going to say than what I did. So we'll end up doing that, put in 65,000. So now at this stage, starting off with 12,000, this is at 50. So we're now talking like better than a 4x gain. And this started off at 1,000, and now it's at 35,000 gain. So it's a 35x gain. And they'll just flip back and forth like that when each coin have their, has their day in the sun. And well, the day in a nasty hurricane or snowstorm on the other end as well too. And as we move on from here, we basically want to basically sell in this area of congestion here. If we're going to keep making new lows, I guess just like before, we just keep on picking away at it because it's getting to the point where you can sell everything again because of how huge of a move lower this is. So you can pick away every time it just keeps on going, just keep on keep getting at it every time the number gets decently nice, nice enough lower. 392 with other, there we go, 245 is nice enough. You could sell everything again, that type of stuff. And in the spot here, what do we do? Well, I'm going to have to put the uh, this in here. You got 64,000. Minimum, minimum near half. Oh, I almost want to go all. It's just down so much. And you take the chance. And, and if you're wrong, well, you've built up yourself a stash of 62,000 of these coins at least right now. And you can work with that and do what that does. But it's, to me, a calculated good gamble. And I know, obviously, I know the price does end up going higher. But let's let's look at it this way. Yeah, maybe you're buying a coin that's on its way to nothing, and that, that can work out. And in reality, I'm going to be talking about profit-taking at different sides, which would be the second half of this when we get to uh, end of January 2018 as, as a planned subject matter. But if it happens to go to like one well then you're just going to have to suck it in and you realize it could go to one and then back up to six and you just get back in the game anyway uh, i'd want to get a little bit back in again on a, maybe a move to like four this area here a 405 maybe make a small make a small trade oh 399 why not and what we can do is we could just take, really, we got a $4 trade down at $2.45. We're pretty much back to where we came from here. So in that situation, if I look at this, I've accumulated 62,000 of these things, just a sick-ass amount. 20,000 means I'm profiting 6,000 from the other side, and I still have 79,800 more. So now i got some room to work with if it goes back the other direction now. Because just as I said here, I thought it'd go much lower, and oh boy, would it ever. I'd same thing here. This can go much higher, 12, 16, 18. Who knows? The volatility, of course, being sick. And there we see it. We have a little bit of a gain. I want a bit more. I probably want to see it go nicer in this range, closer to 7, I think. And you can see maybe might miss out. And yep, see what happens. If I sold it, I could have just took it back there. That's part of the gamble in this game. And 
because I don't got too much inventory, I just bought it. I wouldn't really want to get until a break of this support. I don't think I'd want to buy it, sell it until it goes to like 170 or something. Uh, and then let's just, since I'm waiting for a bigger number, let's just wait for something to happen. And can it break past that resistance? It's barely trying to there, but no. Now it goes back down. Missing out on more missed opportunities, but missed opportunities are fine. Oh, that was close to getting to nine and change. Okay, I'll, oh, but it's just breaking out. I can get easily over 10. There we go, 1060. And last trade four, next trade 10.6. That's, well, that's like 2.5x, 150%. I think it's now time to uh, make these more readable because we're playing some big time business here and f mathematics work this well and they do so how many of the uh, 42,000 can we sell here half close to it did a good accumulation by selling only 17.5 that still leaves me like 27,000 back and the gain here a hundred and 85,000 give me over a quarter million of that coin, which I started with only 12,000. 20x move. Started this one with 1,000. 25x move. How do you do? And in reality, you can wait for 12, 14% moves, pick out way out of them, and then when the 30, 40, 60, 200% moves come, take them. But as it stands now, I'm going to look to be selling here and like, you know what, 14, 15 is a nice profitable number, 16. And back to where we came from, maybe look to maybe in the six seven number. And uh, ten. Okay, wait for something to happen. Unfortunately, I have to go too fast just because to make this video not that long. It's going to be long regardless. Five eighty five is totally where. You, I mean, how do you not here? And then your last turn, we'll call it a turn because that's what this is, is uh, uh, turns of a game. You accumulate 185 to bring your inventory up to 265. So what's just a smart, normal, good play? Maybe even just go like 85,000 of them. It's a good portion again. So here, you only lost a small portion here and you got a huge gain of 100k here. It's like one of those how do you do type of plays, moves, if you will. And this math is not math theory. This is math fact that if you just wait for these numbers to do it and sell them these functions, like I'd sell an eight here, I could, but I, I'd want to probably go a little bit higher, like even over nine. There we go, nine, six, six. Got an ownership of 39. I just acquired 14. So if I sell, like, say, 12,500 of them, I get 120,000 now back. And when you look at how the market is here, where do we sell and buy next? Well, I see it breaking above this resistance. We're probably going to go somewhere to about 15, 16, 17. Play the volatility. It's extreme right now. Uh, like you don't have to sell it for 15, 20% moves when we're getting this type of play. I mean, we're not getting this now. I wish we were, but we're not. But at times, they slow, they get slow, movements go slow and big. And at this time, we're looking at... December 5th, and, and these altcoins are just getting their asses destroyed right now. Their value against Bitcoin is terrible. But that's soon to change, like in the next week from this point. And then for the next month, 30, 50, 60 days, 30, 40, 50 or so, 30, 40 days, it's just going to be wild. But uh, as we see here, let's uh, move uh, the chart. Okay, so 14... You know what? Even though I know it went up the next one, I'd probably still take some here. That's a good gain. And last time we ended up uh, selling 12,005 to bring us down to 27. So I think in a spot like this, selling 9 to 10,000 would probably work out sufficient. You get a good gain of 139. They're now close to a half a million of the GRS. So then as we move forward and we're in major volatility in real time, so in the spots like this, you know as a trader, if you have this accessibility to spend more time working with the markets, you can do a lot of day trading as well. 10, that's not low That's not low enough to buy back. Although going up to 14, I guess I wish I would have. 15. Okay, let's keep on going a little faster. It's grinding its way down. 
I probably at this stage, if I'm looking on this, I know it's easier in real time to just take more, probably like four or five more trades in real life than I'd be doing in this because of obvious reasons I've already mentioned. But no, I want cheap, but there, uh, nine I'll take. And it's another flip back more than anything here. So 139 was gained. We owed 440. Let's go like 110, 115. And that's a gain of 12.7 on the other side. 30, I and mean, this is just sick how high these numbers go higher. So I suppose buy some more back at this lower level here. Sell when it gets back in this congestion area up here. And we're on uh, getting close to Christmas time here. Okay, not quite low enough at 690. Even 660. Uh, yeah, why not? I think we could end up selling at 325,000. Another around 100 to work, 110. That wasn't that large of a sale at 115. Even this isn't that big either. But it's definitely big enough for when you're getting 17,000 from what having uh, like 30,000 plus before. That, that's a gate of over 50% ownership on Mona there. Let's keep on going at it. So same, same sort of deal. Buy a nice leg lower, nice leg higher. It's really, really nothing more to it other than that. I mean, you just wade and wade out here through all of this stuff that's going on at this time for the move to happen. And at this level, Bitcoin prices are hanging in there. But now you're all coins. What you'd be doing in here is you'd be selling. The, you'd actually be trading here. You'd be selling it for Bitcoin is what you're doing. We'll get into that in a little bit. Not a lot, but at different time frames. It would be each coin dependent on when their days were, when GRS and Mona individually had their moves. Most likely you'd been selling both because you're like, your ratio's not moving here, but sure as heck, you know the market is. Okay, let's just figure it buy back here. But the market is moving in, in, in your real term because this is the ratio of just the two together. 462 would definitely be not low enough. Uh, 453, no. And then 385 I would take. And only 200,000, it's 95 type thousand is very much, not that much less than before. And it's going to be much higher than 17. Yeah, you got 24,000 gain. Now you're close to six figures on the Mona side. And you only started off with 1,000 of them, so 72x. Start off with 12,000 there, so 10x. So you're, you're what, 30, 30x or whatever net. And as we continue on, okay, so 518. And you probably would have to, but I'd be a little greedy. I think I could get, and I, I would in real life, but if I'm looking for a better gate, I still think it can come up in the close to the six area. But I would, I totally in real life, though. I mean, there's no question for me I would take that. But you see here, if I take it, I, I'm probably not going to get the buyback, and now it's just going to go up. There's a successful correction. I mean, that's a bullish signal for going higher in past that six number. There we have it, 644. I'll just take that. And your last buy was 25,000 almost, you own 72. Total flip you could do again. And if you do a flip of like 19,500, even 20,000 even, you end up gaining 4675 net, and you're going to gain even much more on the other side. But more importantly, you're going to bring the ownership, which you've had by a half a million before, much higher with this buy. You can see you get it back up to a quarter million. And we'll continue on a bit more. Just not much more, actually. We're getting close to the next segment. Definitely not low enough for the buyback yet. I'd be, I'll be looking maybe like four and change, maybe. And then on the breakout higher, definitely well above eight, nine, probably even minimum. Nice setup to go higher, too. But I'm only going to do a bit more here. And I might not even make another trade. I'm really going to about January 25th. That's really the time frame I'm going to about the... Because that's when the markets were in the area of, and, and we'll, we're done. Okay, so as we go back to the statistics of this in here, 61, like six, 60 trades that were done. The net gain of GRS was that of about 20 times. The net gain here was about uh, 50 times, so overall about 30 to 40, 33, 35 times gains of ownership of the coins. Now, why this data is important is because of how the markets moved. As I said at the beginning of part one, 
that in December the altcoins were getting the asses kicked and they just picked up right around December uh, 10th, 12th, all the way to about January 10th to 30th or so. So let's take a look at what both of these coins look like against the dollar at that time. And we're going to start off with Mona, which in today's right now, as it stands, it's a dollar seven, and look, it was like two dollars up here. I mean, this is just sick volatility. This market got up to like, I'll discount this move, but maybe you could have done, maybe that was available to you, but three dollars and change, three high twos. But what happened before? I mean, here we see it goes down to like thirty-six cents. It got up to like twenty bucks. So I mean, this would have been easy on what you do. This top was like December sixth. Oh, this would have been sick, obviously, because what you would have done is, in this area, you're, sell, you're profit-taking here. Most certainly, you're profit-taking starting here. And then whatever you can pick away at to this top. Those are the profit-taking times with Monacoin. So yes, you'd be ratio trading here and there, but as we were doing examples, we're going to sell maybe... So if we go back to the, the, the board again... And you look at some of these trades, especially on the sellout times. And the times we just go very aggressive. So instead of maybe, say there's a situation, where was a spot where it looks like a clear sellout? Uh, minus 12, 5. Uh, like here. So instead of selling 64,000 for 26 of these, maybe you sold 30,000 for 13,000 of them, then the other 30,000 you sold for Bitcoin. And then the Bitcoin you just do whatever else with. And even further to that, taking little bits of profits during this run higher. There's nothing wrong with that. And that could really take away from some of those gains, but even as it stands, I was surprised that Mona didn't top. It was an early top, but this is, I didn't know that. But uh, if we go back to uh, what it looked like here in January, you're talking about a coin that's worth $7 back then. So that's what I'm going to write down. So $7 Mona. Okay, which will mean that GRS with the ratio at that time being like, well, I can't remember if it was around 6, but probably would have been that would mean that it would be a $1 coin at that time. And sure enough, when we look at it right now, it was. And then the same principles are true here. Profit take in the end of October, maybe, in the, at this top. If you miss this top, you got a second chance, which you do so around December. Now, this was odd. I just happened to pick two coins that topped. But against Bitcoin, it was a different thing. But no, I think there are a lot of, a lot of coins broke highs in January. So two, this is odd that this happened. But either way, within this, this combination, I mean, this just works out sick at this time because a lot of them didn't get their great prices until the 20th of January, 15th of January, and that's when Bitcoin uh, was uh, already starting to fade off like 30-40% lower from some of the nicer points. And I don't know how what, what Bitcoin was then at this point, but it got up to 2.5, but again, right around uh, January, uh, this point in here, it's about a $1 coin. So then, if we do some math, I can take uh, this number and I can multiply it by 7. which would be 370,000. 370,000 plus 250,000 works out to uh, over 620,000. So more than a half a million dollars is what this would be worth at that time. And it would have been worth a little more a few weeks before then. And of course, it'd be worth a lot less. No, I don't know about that. I mean, you could continue ratio trading this. Oh, you'd be easily getting this number well over a million if, you could, if we keep going at it. If we, if we don't just do any profit taking because there are some wild swings on the GRS that Mona that kept on going there after the fact. But, and then of course, amongst this 300, you might have ended up paying maybe five, 10 grand in fees on the, maybe even less. So who cares about calculating fees because you know they're just going to be a small sequential part of it. Now, I started this back in like 20, this game like was, 
back when this was 0 0.002, so one-fifth of a penny GRS was to start. And what that meant was, if I started off with 12,480 of them, equals 12,480, and I divided that by 5, that means that I would have been worth $25. I would have about 50 bucks worth is what I started this game on. $50 into over a half of a million. Using this example of past history, a game that we played of just in here, picking matter division and just playing this in here, that can be done in real life. And if you're able to get these kind of moves that we see and make these types of trades, well, the numbers mathematically, this is no game theory. This is game fact. That if, the if is the game theory part, of course, that the results will work amongst this mannerism. Now, imagine if I just kept on, if you think about it, on a mathematical level, I mean, this is where at some point it just gets out of hand sick. Because the net gain, and I'm gonna if not, I'm gonna fall, I'm gonna throw that dollar one back. Just gain of the coins, because that's what's really important with this trading game. But when I end up making this a 20x gain, well, what happens if I 20x this again? And uh, what, what in this gain here was a a 50x gain. So if I 20x this. That would be 2.5 million on 10. I'd have 5 million of these things. And if I 20x this again, and I did 50x on it, but let's just even just do 20x more, then that would be getting to a million. Mathematic theory, mathematic fact. So then let's just take a look at how it's been for Mona GRS since that big uh, January 2018 time frame top. And as the volatility came into play, well, not much would have happened here, but there's a move where it goes 10 down to 3, up to 5, down to here. So you know a lot of good trades could have been made there and would have been made if you played. Nice little move going from 430 down to 2 and down to 1.5. So what would we have been doing primarily, and if not only for that matter, at this level? And the answer most certainly would have been selling the GRS, the many that we had, and accumulating many more. And then this would have happened. Oh, yeah, we would have known that. Would, I'm not going to do it. I, got the, I went to the whole point. I did many situations. There's a nice move, 345 down to 2. And look at this here, just in one day. I mean, you go from 2 to like 1. I mean, the play you make on March 12th earlier this year. It's just huge. And in a situation like this, you're like, okay, I'm going to sell half of what I got. I'm going to sell everything. And of course, on the everything, you can see if you were able to get at that like one price or point something, that you could at least go back and, well, there we go again. That's the type of situation that these games give us. And again, all the accumulation from point th and all. What did I, that number that I gave, I think I could have beaten actually. Oh, man, I could have been like 2 million and like 40 million. I don't know. It would have been just sick along the way. And then recently, just this little small move here on that of September the 14th, where Mona, what a gain it had. I didn't even know it did it, but it did. 456 up to this. Another large ratio trade that can't be done. I'm probably a fool enough for making this one of my trades when I look at it. Um, but as it goes, that's the mathematics upon this uh, trading game. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.